uh, I will present a, a project about a, a framework including a vibrotactile device. And the idea with this uh, device is to um, reproduce body transfer illusions in VR. And uh, this device is a wearable and, and wireless uh, pair of gloves. So I, I will start with uh, some um, related work uh, about uh, vibrotactile uh, globes or, or, or devices for the hand. So here we have a work from Solasi and others from 2010, and basically it's a finger haptic interface. Uh, it's also a contact and, uh, orientation display, and the idea here is that uh, they have some kind of thimbles that are actuated and uh, they are providing some um, tapping sensations on, on the fingertips. And the idea with this is, um, uh, yeah, uh, execute some kind of uh, shape exploration task. Uh, and uh, this task was executed in a, uh, in a virtual environment. Uh, another examples are uh, some uh, vibrotactile uh, gloves. Also, uh, on, on the left, you can see a glove with uh, vibrating actuators. Uh, in this case, uh, a Kinect was, using, uh, was used for, for the hand tracking, and uh, it was also used in a VR environment. And on the right, you, you can see um, another uh, vibrotactile globe, but in this case, they are using some uh, bending sensors uh, to track the movement of, of, of the fingers. Uh, in this case, they are using a um, wireless interface using on Bluetooth. And uh, more recent uh, research is uh, based on uh, track, uh, the concept of tactors, it's basic uh, electro an arrangement of electrodes in the fingertips so they can reproduce some kind of textures. And um, uh, the idea um, with, with this is a kind of a grasp improvement. Uh, and uh, on the right, um, we have another uh, vibrotactile uh, globe. Uh, in this case, uh, they are using for uh, visual guidance and uh, identification of geometric uh, shapes in 3D. And uh, the interesting thing with this is that uh, they implemented some uh, overdriving and active braking techniques to reduce the latency, and the latency for this device is about 25 milliseconds. Um, now, talking about some um, body ownership experiments. Uh, sorry. In this video, you can see uh, how the synchronous stimulation, uh, visual motor stimulation, and visual tactile stimulation is uh, very important to uh, to reproduce body ownership illusions. Um, so, um, uh, talking about this perception illusions, um, uh, we were studying a, a very important one: is the uh, the long arm illusion. And uh, in this video, you can see an example of the very long arm illusion in which. Uh, the participant can see how uh, his arm is elongated uh, um, and getting longer and longer. Um, and the idea uh, with this experiment is, uh, sorry again. Uh, the idea with this experiment is that uh, uh, they, can, they are uh, also um, testing the user reaction. Uh, threatening the arm, so uh, just to check the user reaction, they, they, they check if the participant is um, uh, pulling his arm to protect it, and uh, uh, in, in that case, uh, check if the illusion was, uh, um, uh, was made correctly. Uh, another example of the illusion is the river hand illusion. In, in this case, you can see on, on the left side the rubber hand, and on the right the real hand. So again, you will see the arm pulling uh, when when the uh, when the um, uh, rubber hand is is threatened. Uh, this illusion was uh, reproduced in VR in some research from 2010, and uh, the interesting thing here was that um, uh, they found that the virtual representation matters. So um, basically, uh, the response can be negated when they uh, change the virtual representation of the hand 
for an abstract object, for example, a uh, 3D arrow. And uh, yeah, in, in other words, basically, users tolerate cert certain amount of inconsistency between the visual and, and uh, proprioceptive sensations. Um, so take, uh, taking into account all this research, uh, we, uh, I can just show you our motivation. And after collecting uh, some guidelines of all these devices and these uh, illusions, the pros and cons, um, uh, we basically uh, are interested in the stretching of virtual arms uh, to design new interaction techniques and some uh, novel uh, research also based on the selection on out of reach objects uh, that is defined as a human scale egocentric uh, haptic feedback. And um, now uh, we can just have these questions. Can we improve the reproduction of body transfer uh, illusions in VR, uh, providing automatic tactile stimuli? That means instead of the uh, traditional manual stimuli that you provide in, in the common uh, psychology experiments. Um, also, in our motivation, we take into account some evolution that we had in our framework. We started with a simple device, a wireless device with simple vibration and digital output, and then uh, we try to improve it uh, with some vibrotactile feedback, analog input, uh, some uh, IMU technology, and we tested um, with some uh, psychology uh, perception experiments. So some interesting models came out that we are using in our new device that I'm presenting today. It's basically a wearable device, low latency, with a multi-channel vibrotactile feedback. So I will um, start uh, giving some um, technical details about the vibrotactile display. Uh, it's a 14-channel, low-latency uh, uh, PWM sig signal controller is our, our core. Uh, we have a 3D printed case. And um, uh, also important in um, our uh, um, device is uh, uh, the design of our vibrotactile display. And for that, uh, we base the location of our actuators and some physiology guidelines and prior research on haptics. And uh, that's why we, um, uh, we decided to put the actuators in, in these uh, positions. Uh, finally, if we encase uh, all the electronics and, and the actuators, we have this kind of arrangement. It's basically a globe uh, managed, by, um, uh, managed wirelessly from the computer. Uh, all the electronics are encased in the forearm, and uh, as you can see, uh, it offers a freedom of movement. So uh, it's, uh, it can be used in the um, uh, implementation of common hand interactions uh, tasks in virtual environments. Also, we implemented a VR environment. It's a basic virtual room with a table matching the experiment uh, conditions with enough space in front to reproduce the long arm illusion, that is the illusion that we are interested on. Um, also, we implemented a very simple uh, 3D user interface that let the, the lets the user uh, let the user um, um, to have some user input, answer questions, and select uh, some options. Um, also, important in in this. Um, VR environment is the mapping that we are doing from the, our vibrotactile device to the VR environment. So uh, basically, we define some tactile control points. So for every uh, vibrator on our device, um, we have a virtual representation. In this case, you can see some spheres. And in this video, you can see how if we move a, a 3D object through the hand, all these uh, tactile control points are activated. Um, in uh, fo following uh, this um, curve that depicts the, the signal to activate the vibrators. And uh, basically, um, this uh, feedback is provided by a function of the distance between the hand representation and the virtual object. And we found some uh, parameters that, uh, after some um, uh, experiments we had. Um, so basically, this is a diagram of our uh, framework in action. Uh, we have an, a, a virtual uh, application. 
uh, this uh, application displays the hands tracked, tracked by the lip motion, sends the data, data to uh, an UDP server that is always running in the same computer on another computer, and um, it has the, the, the uh, task to encode all the tactile control points information. Uh, then uh, this information is uh, encoded to, uh, as a vibration signal via Bluetooth, and then uh, the devices receive this information and propagates the vibration uh, across the, the palm of the hand. Also, we have some uh, headphones in our uh, framework just to provide uh, background sound effects and noise cancelling. Uh, now I will uh, talk about the experiment. It's basically about the comparison uh, of the long arm illusions with uh, using the traditional uh, uh, manual tapping versus the uh, automatic um, stimuli provided with our device. So again, you can see in this picture uh, how is the setup. We have an Oculus Rift with a lip motion mounted in front, uh, a pair of uh, vibrotactile gloves, and uh, a computer running the application. Um, here you see that the, the participant is using both uh, gloves, uh, but for the longer emulation we are using just one. We use both just to familiarize the object, the, the participant with some uh, vibrotactile feedback. Um, we had uh, 37 participants, 26 males and 11 females. Uh, this is the range of ages, and uh, the mean time for the experiment, including the questionnaires, was about 50 minutes, uh, mainly students uh, and people related with IT. Um, okay, now I can talk about the experiment conditions. In this video, you can see what was the final result of our elongated arm. And uh, yeah, we have two main, main conditions. Uh, basically, uh, condition one is the manually synchronized stimulation uh, from now on called tapping. And the second one is the automatic tactile stimuli from now on called the vibrotactile condition. So here you can see how the tapping condition uh, works. Basically, we need an operator, and uh, in our case, the operator was trained, so he's providing proper feedback with no delay, and is uh, always providing this tapping manually. Uh, in the vibrotactile condition, uh, the, the feedback is provided by our device, and uh, in this case, the, basically the glove is vibrating whenever we detect a collision between the, uh, um, uh, the bouncing ball and the virtual hand. Uh, so, so check if we can compare the, the two uh, conditions. Uh, we basically uh, um, are having four, in, four dependent variables. The, in, in the shape of questions uh, in a scale from zero to 10, being 10 the, the most, uh, the, the higher score. And uh, with these um, uh, variables, we want to check um, um, if, we want to check if our device is uh, comparable enough uh, in terms of ownership, proprioception, comfort, and perceived length of the virtual arm. So the idea here is that uh, with higher scores, we can uh, basically, basically conclude that the illusion uh, could be correctly induced with our device or without, uh, with our framework, sorry. So okay, now I can show you some results. And in general, we found that um, we get uh, acceptable scores, and that's the reason uh, why we think that we could reproduce uh, some other um, illusions. But if we check uh, the scores by condition, uh, we found uh, significant effects or significant influence on ownership, uh, proprioception, and comfort uh, for the tapping condition, but uh, and also for the uh, vibrotactile condition. Another uh, interesting result is that um, for our experiment, the final arm length in the virtual reality was the uh, 200%, and as you can see here, uh, we, we found an underestimation. 
uh, I mean, we, uh, we get good results because the, uh, the participants are um, feeling an elongated arm, but uh, they underestimated the perceived length of this arm. We know that uh, this was already detected in prior depth perception experiments in VR, but uh, we want to check if this is more related to body transfer illusions using fibrotactile devices. Uh, another thing that we took into account was the reaction to a sudden event. So in this video, uh, we, uh, you, you can see some reactions we got. And uh, um, uh, the idea here is that uh, the, the sudden event matters and it's very important if we want to reproduce the body transfer illusion. Uh, and we got um, acceptable uh, reaction levels. And more than 80% of our participants uh, show a recognizable reaction, and we got acceptable scores in about 60% of uh, the answers. So I have uh, some conclusions. Uh, we presented um, technology framework to enable and simplify the process to induce a reinforced body transfer illusion. Um, and... Um, uh, we found that basically we can replace uh, uh, the operator uh, manually tapping the arms of the participant or any part of the body with our vibrotactile device. And uh, also uh, we think that it can be transferred to another uh, body transfer illusions. Uh, for the future work, uh, we, we, can, we want to um, integrate other illusions, integrate uh, haptic drivers and piezoelectric actuators, um, sense subtle reactions using uh, sensors like uh, galvanic skin response, and uh, finally publish our uh, framework as an open source solution. And I think that concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you for your presentation. Uh, I saw the videos where the people got something to drop on their hand, and I noticed that they're not pulling their their hand back. Was the hand that, uh, tied to the to the apparatus for the experiment? Um, no, but. Um they were asked to keep the hand in a fixed position to... Okay, yeah, just, so you told them to not move their arm? Yeah, the basically expert. just not to damage the tracking made by the leg motion. But okay. yeah, I mean, if uh, we replace the tracking, we uh, would like to see some pulling reaction from the participants. Thank you. Mm -hmm.